Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the UCF Dynasty here as we continue our journey in season number one. So far, we have seen kind of an array of guys really doing different things. Antonio Johnson leads us in scoring with 16.6. Larry O'Neal is right behind him. Now, I have not figured out Larry O'Neal in the game yet, but in sim situations, he's actually pretty decent. Marcunas averages 8 and 12. He has been our guy getting after rebounds along with Mwangi, who is second with 9.8. And really just being, you know, versatile is something that I really strive for here in season number one because I don't really know too much about every player yet, like what everybody's strength is yet. So we are still learning as we go. Obviously, Antonio Johnson is our best score, but sometimes I feel like he can't create his own shot, but he is very good on defense, so that is a good thing right there. And then we want to just give other, people's, other people opportunities also and get to know them. So today you will see, you know, Milo Yarbrough get some more playing time and guys like uh, Jordan White get some playing time. Guys that are that have different skill sets, I definitely want to get going. And just to see, like, what situations I can play people in, especially since it's early in the season, I definitely want to get familiar with a lot of these guys. One guy I really, really like is Jay Henry, though. He is a very versatile forward who can handle point forward duties, and I like that. And he can also get after the boards as well. So we go into non-conference play once again, continuing our journey here. And we end up playing LSU at, in game number six. We end up winning that one 71 to 51. So a big time victory right there. Our rebounding has really carried us in these sim game cast situations. And then next we go up against Miami, a battle of the state of Florida here. And here we are tied 58 apiece. It looks like this is a dead even game here. Reboundings are the same, assists are the same. So here we go. Let's see, we are on the road here. Let's hop into the action. We do inbound the ball at a 58 all game. Johnson has 25 in this game. We'll see if he can keep it up as we hop into this action. Here is Mwangi at the three point line. He's not much of a three point shooter at all, but Marcuna is posting up. Good pass over to Mwangi. And he will get that one to go. And now it's a two point lead here for UCF. Just under 10 minutes to go here. Here's a pass. Jump shot and just outside the paint. That one is good. Tie ball game right back. Here we are on defense again. Mack could be playing defense on ball, but a good pass inside, and that is good. Miami takes the two-point lead here. Marcoon is handling the ball now. Down by two. Pass inside to Milwaukee, who loses it. And here goes Miami the other way with the two-point lead. We'll see if they can stretch it here. Running a play this time over to 55 inside back. And that one is going to be good. You know, the defense is actually pretty good for UCF, but sometimes we allow these long passes like that one. 8-0 run for Miami. It's now a six-point lead. And here we are turning the ball over now. And Miami with the six-point comfortable lead. Playing good defense, but we can play defense too. Here we go the other way. Fast break opportunity inside. Marcunas will get it to go in traffic. It's now a four-point game. As now here we are playing some more defense. Good defense by Marcunas. Here we push it up the court. This is Maccabee stepping back. He sees an open man in the corner. That's Antonio Johnson who lets it fly, and that is good. It is now a one-point lead here in favor of Miami. But here they answer right back with a nice pass inside. Now a three-point game. 69-66 now, missed shot opportunity. Going the other way is Jay Henry all the way, and this is what I like about him. He, he's the one guy off the bench who can kind of guard every position and also be that point forward for us and push the ball up the court. He can get to the basket as he goes to the free throw line, hits both free throws. It's now just a one-point game. So here's Miami back the other way. Three-pointer missed that time in the corner. Cole check on the rebound. Back up to Henry. Henry driving again, and he will draw the foul. He is very, very good at that. He goes to the free throw line again. 68-69. This one will tie the ball game up. And the second free throw is also good. So now we have the one-point lead here. 
Three and a half to go. The battle for Florida right here. Obviously, there's the Gators who are very good in basketball as well. But here we go. 70 to 69. Getting ripped away and picked up by Mwangi. And that is an easy layup. Maybe some luck on that one. Antonio Johnson got ripped. He's not that great at handling the basketball. And here we are on defense. Jump shot missed. Rebound by Darian Edwards. We go the other way with under a minute to go. Bad pass. That one is deflected. And Miami has possession here with 34 seconds to go. Here's a drive to the lane. And it will be an and one. Moangi gets called for that one. 72 all now if they make this free throw. Bart Schwab goes to the free throw line averaging seven points a game. And he hits that one. It's now a tie ball game. We kind of have the last shot here, at least an opportunity for it. Inside, outside shot for Antonio Johnson. Offensive board. Mwangi puts it up. That's a miss. Marcunas, and once again, another miss. Three straight opportunities to put one in, and that's exactly why I shot the ball so early in the shot clock. I knew we would get opportunities with Marcunas on the floor. He has one right under the basket, and that one will be a miss. And now with four seconds left, Miami has one last shot opportunity. Two seconds, one second. They pass it up, and this one's a three, and it's going to be good by Meeks. A game winner for Miami. And we will go home with a loss. Meeks had an open three. Antonio Johnson tried to step out, but could not get out there for the contest in Miami wins by a buzzer beater UCF falls to a Florida opponent that one hurts because we had an opportunity to win that game with those tips and with those rebounds at the end I'm not sure if it would have mattered with that three-pointer but you never know how things break when teams are down maybe they wouldn't have took that three maybe they would have took a different shot who knows but we end up losing this one. Meeks only had seven points in that game, and he hit the game winner. He had seven, seven, and five. And wow, we lose a very, very close one there. So now let's just pivot a little bit and for the first time look at recruiting. Now, our recruiting points are very, very little this year because we are we actually had to like simulate to get to this year and based on how bad we did we've lost a lot of points in recruiting we have three scholarships left and we don't have a lot of high interest and the first guy that ends up signing with us is nathan manning he is a big man and we will need some big men going forward marcunas is a senior so he will be the first one i'm not really sure on what our recruiting restrictions will be i might just have it so that you know i can only go after you know three stars is the highest guy i can go get i think that's what i will rock with and then see how that goes we have some other recruits that we could go after here, like Rocco McGinnis. We don't know much about him right now, but he is six foot eight. I want another forward who can kind of play every position. But I think one thing that we do need in recruiting is shooting. So I'm definitely looking for that guy. But with 22 points remaining, we can't scout that much. Like we don't know pretty much anything. We can't really recruit that heavily. Recruiting is very simple in this game, but. With 22 points, you really can't do anything. We have two scholarships as well, so I want to use these points wisely. But Manning does uh, commit to our squad. He will obviously be renamed to one of you guys when I do have the episode to submit your recruit. It's not this one, but later in the season, I will. We continue non-conference play. We go up against uh, Cal State Northridge. We end up losing by six, even despite out-rebounding them 50-23. to 23. Amazing. We still lose that by six. Then we go up against Elon. We end up beating them by three, barely. And now we go up against St. Bonaventure, who's always been a good tournament team, at least as far as my brackets have gone in the past. I've picked St. Bonaventure to go fairly far at least to the sweet 16 even despite being a low seed at times but we end up actually beating them pretty well 80 to 62 i did not expect that and we end up having 46 rebounds in that game to their 37 and then we go up against davidson steph curry's alma mater and they make it a game we are very very close there to start the second half 
but then UCF starts to pull away a little bit. We end up only winning by eight. 52 to 19 with these rebounds. I mean, how are these teams even staying in these games? Darkunas had eight and 26. I mean, the guy is just a dominant big man and we end up getting the victory. So at least we get some victories right there. So now we continue play here as we go into our last non-conference game. And today it will be versus Yale, a two win Yale team. This should be a three win Yale team. This should be a winnable game, obviously. And we have to take care of business. They have given up a whole lot of points this year. So maybe we'll take advantage of their defense. But here we go. I'm excited today because we will get to start Milo Yarbrough for the first time in this game. I want to see what he can do at point guard. Maybe he can add some much needed shooting. So let's get this game underway. Here's Antonio Johnson. Quick trigger three. And he is our leading scorer by far and our best guy putting the ball in the bucket. But we just definitely need help for him. Here, 3 nothing. Here's a pass inside. This one's deflected by Marcunas. It gets back to the point guard and a drive and one. The animations in this game are hilarious because he definitely traveled, but it will be an and one, and they already start out with a bucket, 3-3. Three, three. Here is Yarbrough getting to the basket, though, on Sylvester Flynn, who just had that and one bucket, and he draws the foul. He goes to the free throw line. He has not hit a free throw this year, and he hits his first one at the line right there. As now he goes to the second, and this one will be good as well. Free throws is something that we've gotten better at. I have adjusted that free throw slider a bit, so to make it a bit easier. But now here we are in a tie ball game. Here is Antonio Johnson getting to the bucket. He will get fouled on that one. There's a couple of fouls early on by the Yale defense. I want to take advantage. Here's a drive and a circus shot, and it's good. Wow. The CPU seems to hit these tough shots on us, and now here they are on defense, forcing a missed three that time by Yarbrough. All the way the other way. It's a bucket in transition for Yale, and they have the early two-point lead here. They are at home, remember. They're trying to bounce back from that tough loss versus Miami. Here we go. Defense turns into offense. Antonio Johnson goes full court. And he's got seven early points as well for our leading score. 11 to 9 game now. Here's a pass inside. And that is a good one, but a missed shot under the hoop. Here we go the other way. Johnson running the break. He goes to his right hand and will get fouled by Sean Ward. Is now Antonio Johnson goes to the free throw line. He hits the first. And the second will also be good tie ball game as he checks out he gets a breather and now here we are tie ball game more defense turning into offense here is Jay Henry passing it up to Jordan White and he gets the contact and misses but gets his own board it's blocked again Henry putting this one up it's good a little travel on Henry that time but it will be a 13 to 13 game after they score a bucket right there to tie it up but here is a shot a tough one. It's blocked by Marcunas. All the way is Devon Bands in transition, and he gets the bucket. We might have to switch our tempo up. Now, we are a half-court tempo offense, but it seems like we score a lot better in transition. Here's a drive to the basket by Yale. And an and one. Another one. Cody Stanley gets called for this foul. And Sean Ward, who doesn't even average a point per game, he gets three on that one. Yale takes the early one-point lead. Pass inside, jump shot. Gale answers back with the jumper outside the paint, and they take the three-point lead here. Looking for somebody to create their own shot here. Johnson with the three, and he ties it up. He's got 12 points early on, three of five, and we're just definitely going to have to lean on Johnson. Good thing he's only a freshman. We'll have him for four years, but here's Jordan White getting involved with his left hand, and we do take the lead here. We definitely need to get some help for Johnson, but here's some more defense. Johnson and Jordan White play an excellent perimeter D and we'll get the transition dunk. Johnson is off to a great start today. So here we go, 22-18 start here for UCF. Johnson the other way, in traffic, throws one up. He misses, but an offensive rebound, he gets his own board. Five of eight from the field. Johnson is off to a great start. He's got 16 points, 16 of our 24. 
And here we go, Johnson. I want a heat check here. He loses the handle, trying to drive to the basket and draws the foul, just throws one up and will get the call. 24 to 20, 16 points in the first half, going for 18 here at the line. Antonio Johnson, the freshman, will see if he can continue this hot play down the stretch here to end non-conference play. And that one will be good. An early six-point lead at the end of the first half. Now there's about two and a half to go. It looks like Coach is going to play Milo Yarbrough some more, but here's the disadvantage, his height. He allows defenders to get to the bucket, offensive rebound, and that is good. Back to a three-point game. Yale misses again, a jump shot, offensive board again. It's now down to a one-point lead. So here we go. They end up tying this ball game up at 30 apiece. Here's a drive, left hand layup. That is good by Cody Stanley in traffic now, 32 to 30. Here they push the ball the other way. And he goes all the way to the basket. And it's a right-handed finger roll. And Burnett has eight here in the first half. And now here we hold, the, hold it for the last shot. But they hold the lane wide open. And that is going to be a foul. And Jay Henry will go to the free throw line. Boy, I love Jay Henry. He's just a sophomore, so we will have him at least for three years. He hits the first of two. The second free throw will be off the left rim. And now the last shot is coming, 14 seconds. Good defense, though, by Cody Stanley. We go the other way. We will try to hold this for the final shot. Eight seconds to go. Stanley working it outside. Here is Henry trying to get it off. Two seconds. He throws it up at the basket and will draw a foul. With the half second left in the first half, a lucky break right there. We just tried to get a shot off, and we ended up getting a foul call. He goes to the free throw line, hits the first. The second is short. They will have to throw it up, and that one will be the end of the half. We have just a two-point lead versus the three-win Yale Bulldogs. Definitely not what I imagined here in this game, but it has been actually a very good game. And Yale making this a good one, 34 to 32. So here we go in the second half. We have a very, very tight ball game. And so far, Yale has kept up with UCF. Here's Antonio Johnson. Heat check from three. And that one will be off back rim. He was going for point number 21 on that three. But here we are on defense. A missed opportunity right there with the deflection. And it's a basket. And Yale ties it up to start the second half. Yale once again, a fadeaway two. That one is good. Two-point lead here. Yale starting out the second half hot. Here they go with about 13 minutes to go here in this second half. A long pass to the other side of the court. And a foul going to the basket by Darkunas. And it will be a 38 to 34 start here. We've been scoreless so far. Here's a three opportunity off the mark by Milo. This is a reason why I played him. I thought that he would be a good option to have as another three point shooter, but he has not hit one today. We send the double team, good pass. 8-0 run here for Yale. They have the six point lead. Will the bleeding stop? Here is the on offense again, drive to the basket and another called foul on the UCF Knights. It's now up to a seven point lead, 41-34. Getting ripped away twice. Yale going the other way in transition. Two on one now and they get another foul call. And now Yale takes the nine point lead here, 34-43. And here we are with some good defense. Johnson getting us back in this game, a transition bucket. He's got 20 in this game, and now another nine-point lead. Yale, deep three. This one's off, but offensive rebound. Put up and in. Marcunas couldn't snag the board that time. He can't get them all. But now it's a 47-36 game. It's now a double-digit lead, but here's Marcunas with the hook shot. As now they still are up by nine. They eventually gets back to 11. Here it is Stanley off the bench, passing over to Jack McAbee this time. Deep three. It's going to be good, 51 to 43. And now McAbee coming off of the bench. He got a day off today, but we're putting him right back, right back in this game. Here he pushes it up in transition this time. Pass inside. It's Jay Henry with the layup. 
And now it's down to a six point game. Maccabee showing what he can do off the bench. So here we go, 55, 40, 51, 45. Here's a pass to the lane. This one is a floater and it will be off. Here we go the other way. This time, Henry over, swinging it inside to Mwangi. Can he post up and get a bucket here? And we do. It's down to a four point game. Six minutes to go here in this game. Here it, we are getting ripped away, but Jay Henry playing heads up defense, gets the loose ball, lays it in. It's now a two point game versus three win Yale Bulldogs team. I cannot believe this is a close game, but Yale just continues to answer back. And now is a four point game. Good steal that time by Milo. P pass up to Jay Henry in transition. Back to a two point game. It's back and forth so far. Here's a tough layup. That one's missed. Here we go the other way. Yarbrough, can he go all the way to the bucket? He gets fouled and will not convert on the layup. But he will go to the line looking to tie this ball game up. Down by two. The five foot nine point guard will hit the first one. And the second one will also be good. It's now tied at 53. And some starters come back into the game now. And here we go. Under two minutes. 55-55, Larry O'Neal getting to the basket, and he draws the foul. Larry O'Neal has been very good at scoring in those uh, game cast situations, but in the real game when we're controlling, it's very hard to score Larry O'Neal. He's a kind of a slow player, so creating his own shot is tough, but he goes to the free throw line and hits both free throws. Two-point lead. A minute and a half to go. Can we play some good defense? Milo does not have good on-ball defense. A missed shot, but an offensive rebound by Yale. And now it is back tied at 57. Quick shot. The other way. It's Antonio Johnson with the three. Three-point lead. Good defense by Mwangi. Here we go the other way. Antonio Johnson tries to get to the bucket, but gets stopped. Getting over to Milo. He gets double teamed as well. He gets it ripped away eventually. Yale the other way. 41 seconds to go. Trying to push it. It's a tough shot. In transition, it is good. Now just a one-point lead. And Yale is going to have to foul. We will go to the free throw line here with, a, with Johnson. He only has five points in the second half. That one is good making it a two-point game. Missed shot, but the offensive board by Marcunas, and that will stretch it to a four-point game. So here we go, 13 seconds to go. Fade away, three, and it's good. 10 seconds, what a shot by Yale. They will have to foul Milo, and Sylvester Flynn is fouled out. And now here comes Milo possibly putting this game out of reach at least cannot get it to a four point game but can get it to three and it's good 65 to 62 eight seconds to go they just hit a tough fadeaway three here they go passing it to the perimeter this is a three this one's off offensive rebound put up and in point seven to go one point lead but all we have to do is pretty much inbound it and we do exactly that we hold on versus three win Yale. Who thought that that would be a close game like that? Antonio Johnson with 24 in this one, only had six points in the second half after a monster's first half where he went, to, where he went for 18 points. But we hold on in the end. What an ending. Wow, we just need another option scoring the basketball. We're gonna try some things. I'm not even sure how. We're going to get that scoring, but Jay Henry could move to the starting lineup. That could be an option. Larry O'Neal, like I said, is very, very good at scoring in those game cast situations when we sim games, but when you play with him, it seems like he's just non-existent, not on the court. I think that one thing we are lacking is shooting. We just don't have it. Like, we just don't. Antonio Johnson is the only guy really that can fill it up. And he's averaging 20 points a game. I mean, he's doing what he should do as our best scorer. He's third in the conference in scoring as we enter conference play now. Marcunas is averaging 15.2 rebounds. 
that is amazing. So at least we're getting a guy that can rebound the ball well and a guy that can score the ball, but we definitely need a second option scoring the basketball. On defense, Johnson is actually playing a very good D as well. He is second in the conference in scoring. And now we open up conference play versus VMI next episode. And they have the leading score in the conference, barely over Antonio Johnson, averaging 20.9 in Mike White. So I think we will get through this string of games right here. VMI through Winthrop. We'll have to see. I might get through like five games. I think we'll spend like three episodes in conference play before hopping into the conference tournament. So we'll have to see how that goes. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I hope the rain don't come